Just say, just say hypothetically, you want to be in the Eagles team. And at the moment, you're sitting here in Dallas, okay? And you play for a club in Dallas, or I think there's some guys from outside Dallas too. So this is this is the top. And at the moment, you're about here. So you've got to get from there to there. So you've got to work out what you need to do to get there. So it's like you know, you get, if you want to be, you want to treat it like a bunch of steps because there's got to be stages. So what's the first stage? Make a plan. Make a plan, Stan. Make a plan. Yep. Yep, okay, that's the first stage. What's the plan? What's the first step of the plan? Because I've never known Americans to be so quiet. I've always thought when I met Americans, shit, they talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first step? Write it out. Pardon? <laughs> write it out, yep. What's the first what's the first thing you're gonna write? Your goal. Pardon? Your goal. Your goal, no. I maximize your potential. We've already done your goal. Our goal is to make hypothetically is to make the English thing. Good man, thank you. This is a white one, is it? A white one on the whiteboard, that would be good. Okay, so let's say Eagles is that step there. And we make our plan. This is our plan. At the bottom, it's pretty easy. What's the first step? Still trying to get that out of here. Yeah. How to know? Yep. Okay. So, what do you think the first step could be? Hard work. Hard work. No. No. Almost. Yeah. That's the first step. Is personally analyze yourself and work out what you want. And then, what's the next step? Learn the game. Learn the game. Yep. Learn the game. And after that. What's the next one? <coughs> you learn the game. That's great, but you've got to be able to play the game, don't you? So, if you want to play the game at this level, you know, averagely, or pretty good, or very good. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if you want to play the game, you might as well do it properly. Does that make any sense at all? Yes. You might as well do it technically correctly. So that's, and that's why we're here, and that's why the vision of Texas Rugby is to equip you people, and I'm talking about coaches here too, really important for coaches, because we're going to be gone and we hope that you're, you're going to learn a lot, we hope, from us, and that you'll be able to keep the ball rolling with your teams. And that you guys here in this room will go back and set a standard. I don't want you to go back and talk, 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 talk all the time about nothing. I want you to go back and actually do it. Do it with those guys around you. We're, we're, we're not... Um, I think it's because we're probably a small country with a small population, we realise we're insignificant, but we're not big talkers. We're sort of, we sort of, we're better at doing things than actually talking about it. So that, that's where we come from. That, that may not be applicable in your world because it's different, but I think really the, the key is to technically learn. It's like riding a bike. If you learn to ride, oh, that's not a good example actually. But if you learn to do something, because <laughs> you know, once you can ride a bike, you can bloody ride a bike. Don't you? <laughs> and you leave the thing for 20 years and you hop on the bike, you can still ride it. But if you can learn how to do something properly and accurately, then you can go from there to there very, very quickly. Very quickly. And if we had three days, not even that, probably two full days, on catching and passing while you're running, these guys here could technically get you all pretty bloody good in two days. <coughs> and then all you'd have to do is just practice it. And we're going to achieve a certain amount anyway, but we've got a whole lot of other things besides just catching and passing that we want to do as well. So 
what I'm saying here is if you are ambitious to have a successful team to make the Eagles side to play professional rugby, because the whole world's opening up for professional players. Now, it's not just the traditional players. See, we haven't had a hell of a lot of foreign players playing in New Zealand because the standard's very high and you've got to play pretty well to get there. Todd Cleaver's about the only guy that's actually done that, I think. About the only, no, there'll be a couple of American guys that have got to a high level. And I think Todd only made, I think he might have made a couple of games for provincial and he went on to South Africa and he made super rugby in South Africa. So that was bloody great. But it's very hard to do it that way. I mean, I think he did it the right way because he was able to learn technically his rugby. He came to our academy, by the way. Uh, it, stage one for him was, was Iran's, and then he went on to North Harbour and he played there for a while, then he went on to, I think it was Johannesburg, and he played Lines. Super. Yeah. Lions, was it? Yeah. And then he went to Japan after that. Great. And, and mm -hmm. made the Eagles team somewhere in the middle. Still the UK. And, um, and he's lived a life of rugby, yeah. you know. A little bit, a little bit similar to me, actually. And uh, he, so he did that as an American on his own back. So he did that deal of sleeping on couches, you know, sleeping in different girls' beds, all that sort of stuff in the early stage of his career because he had to have somewhere to sleep, eh? You know, and, um, and it was a pretty amateur, pretty amateur yeah. code. They're all jealous of him, I see him, right? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, um, now that's, it's really different. If you, I mean, you can play in the Philippines, you can play in bloody Sri Lanka, you can play in Spain. He can play in Portugal. My son's just been to Portugal, he's 20 by the way, Portugal and uh, in France, you know, played in a team in the southwest of France because he surfs, so he could surf there and play rugby and then he went to Portugal, did the same there, fantastic, you know, and he's not a rep player or anything at the moment. He hopes to be, but at the moment he's not. And those sort of things are open to you all over the world. But if you get good technically, the more you play and the more you practice, the better you're going to be at it. The more valuable you're going to be as a rugby player, the more teams you're going to make, and the more experiences and fun and success you're going to have. So I reckon that first step after, and this is very real for you guys learning the game, and so when you're listening to Dave Rennie and Jamie talking about whatever they're talking about, what they're trying to do is help you learn the game and understand why we're doing something. Not, this is what you've got to do, it's why. So after learning the game, I'm going to put the word skills. So skills are a range of things. It's a range of things. But it's technically, learn it correctly. So, you know, we... We haven't got a ball in here, but we said the, the mini cup. Thanks, mate. So we said out there before that we don't want to see guys catching the ball like this and passing and, and passing the ball like that. It's like a washing machine, <coughs> you know. And it's going to, it can go anywhere at the end of the day. You now we want it. We want to take it here and we want to give it there. <coughs> take and give. So we want to see you square on as you're running with a ball, not going this way and that way. Because if you, if you pass it that way and follow it, the guy tackling you just drifts off onto the next player. It's pretty simple. But if you, if you get the ball here and then you go like that, you may not release and he drifts and that little gap opens and it's great when the gap opens. It's fantastic because all of a sudden the gap looks huge and you can just start. There's nothing like taking a gap. <coughs> That's why those low, low, low arousal guys have got to beat their chest before they get out there, otherwise they'll miss the gap. That's what I was referring to yesterday. So what we'd like to see on, the, on day three is being aware, of all of you being aware of some of the things you learned yesterday and trying to do it. And we sort of will, will try and correct you during the day, but we've got a whole range of things to get through. So we need plenty of attention. Um, I'll just finish this little story. So what do you reckon the next one is, guys? So you learn, you're going to learn the game and study the game, watch a few <coughs> games on TV, try and work out what they're trying to do. To learn the game, if you want to watch that 
that um, led us like up between Australia and New Zealand played a couple of nights ago. What you should do is look at the two teams and try and work out what they're trying to do. And that'll help you learn the game. Because you've got to get involved in it to learn it more quickly. Really work on the skills you've learned over these three days and grow them. What's this next step? Implementing those skills. Could be like that. Now I reckon you've got a target one step at a time, so it might be to make the all Texas state side. What am I going to do to make the all Texas state side? It might be, it might be, I want my club to beat whoever. That might be the first step. All Texas state side might be the second test. And then maybe what's after that? So? National title with your state side, yeah, that's a good one. National title, yeah. And what happens if you win the national title with your state side? You get a lot of exposure. A lot of exposure, and what else what does exposure give you? Opportunity. Opportunity. Yeah. And then you're into it. And then when you get there, you know how to do something technically. It allows good coaches to introduce you to other strategies. And you can achieve those strategies because you know how to do things. Whereas some guys make that top level because they've got... Carlin Isles is an example. Is it Carlin or Caitlin? Carlin Carlin Isles, yeah. <laughs> Caitlin the girls, mate? I'm not saying they're girls. <laughs> Bloody fuck. But I mean, I see criticism all over the place. Why isn't he starting in the sevens team? And the reason he's not starting is... That he, you got to understand where the hell you should be on the field, and sevens is only seven players, and you've got to defend as well as attack. And he doesn't know where he's where he should be standing because he hasn't learned. He hasn't learned the game. He hasn't done. <coughs> he hasn't done this first and and that. And he's going to be fantastic, absolutely. I mean, he's got this inside outside swerve already, and he's got and he can catch and pass. Maybe he can't pass that well when he's running. And he's got real gas and you can't buy that. So he'll get there, but he's got to, he's got to build his skill set and build the steps first. So I think somewhere in there, what, what we're trying to do, it's not only technical skills. We're, so I'll put technical here. <laughs> There's also a thing called physical. What does that mean? Physical. No, nope, that's mental. <laughs> we'll put that up, right? Because that's bloody important as you found out yesterday. What's the spot? What's physical? Genetics, proper training. Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely. What does proper training mean? What does that mean? Uh, Lifting weights, working on your flexibility. Uh, what? So you look good on the beach? Yes, you can survive a rugby match. Eating right. Specific to rugby is what we're talking about. De developing physically specific to rugby, and that depends what, what position you are. And that's really important, eh? So you know, I don't know whether your clubs have have trainers. And it's really important to get a program. Not from some gay guy who's a bloody uh, um, a fitness, you know, you go to personal fitness consultant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, I, know, I, I mean, I shouldn't, I, sh I shouldn't say those things, you know, I keep on, I keep on slipping out, you know. <laughs> but, you know, like all, those fitness, all those guys in fitness gyms, they talk the talk, don't they, and they're bloody doing this and that, but I often think, what is, where's the end goal? What, are, they, are they developing? Rugby players with the skills, with the physical uh, means that they need to perform in rugby. So you all agree that outside backs need need to do different things in the gym than front row forwards. Is my point. Okay. So see if you can get a program specific to rugby, and there'll be a way you'll be able to probably get it on Google. Actually, I haven't tried, but you probably will. But that physical, you need, you know, I think John Eels. Who I respect greatly on that video I played yesterday, John Eels said 
you know, the physical skill set gives you the ticket to be there. But the mental skills differentiates how well you do it, how well you perform. <coughs> so what's the what's the fourth one? Yeah. yeah. Tactical. And that's really learning the game, I suppose. And understanding that what you what you're doing as a team, how you're going to beat the opposition. Where they're weak, where they're strong, where you're weak, where you're strong. So as a coach, we see the potential, but that potential is held with you guys as players, what you do or you don't do. And I guess, and I guess the divide in the middle is how do we maximise it as a team. And I was just writing a few notes down there, guys, and, and I look at it it's like this. It's, unless we have a purpose, no one's going to maximise their potential, whether you're playing for Louisiana or Dallas. So it's easy for me as a coach to go, if you go and practice those drills, and that's essentially what we'll be doing this week. Um, but, but I think the potential in all lies with you fellas. So what am I saying? <clears throat> if the purpose for you guys is to play rugby is to make sure that you enjoy it, you like your team's rugby, um, I think those are easy answers. I do believe everyone in the room wants to be successful. To what degree? Varying on different individuals. I think you all like to win. Um, how much you will do to be successful and want to win, I think the real power is in the purpose. So as coaches, developing a purpose for your group of players based on what their potential is, is something that you need to do to get it. You know, so it's going to be different for every team. Different for Reds' team, different for my team. Different on circumstances. One of the coaches come up to me and said, how many hours do you train a week? I said, that many hours. He says, well, we only have this many hours because all the boys work. So what can you do? What, what sort of advice? How can you help me combust whatever you guys are doing over the course of a week in the professional environment so we can give what I call the big rocks to our team? So I'll come and see me tomorrow. I'll give you a few ideas. Because we've both coached that club footy level. Really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. So for me, maximising that lies with yourselves. And how to get the most out of that, given in your individual circumstances, your team circumstances, is to have a real purpose. And if your purpose is on Saturday to get on the bus with the boys, go out and have some fun, uh, well, so be it. But I want to give you another couple of things. I think you have to have rules, and you have to have leadership. And the reason I reckon you have to have rules, and you have to have leadership, is because if everyone doesn't buy into the rules, and doesn't follow somebody or something, then they eventually you have resentment. And that's when you have a bit of a few rough waves in the team. Um, and then on the flip side of the coin is when you can't live by those rules or you can't live to those standards, that might be time to play a different sport or play a different game. And that, that's a simply, and if you can get those two or three big rocks sorted out, then you start realising, not potential, but a bit of net income, which is business owners, that's what you're after. I think the team's after the same stuff. Does that make any sense? <coughs> I think the interesting thing is, from what we've seen over the last couple of days, is a lot of people talk about wanting to win a championship and win this and that, but I'm not <clears throat> convinced you understand what it takes to do it. Um, and look, as we've seen, you know, a few guys obviously enjoy a beer. Um, some have had quite a few last night and may battle uh, to potentially back up today. So. <coughs> Ultimately, what Jamie's saying is um, you need to have, have some sort of purpose, but it's, it's, it's a bit of unity, everyone fighting for the same thing and being willing to make a few sacrifices and, and have some standards that you're going to live by. And uh, in our group, we call it a lot about personal meaning. So we focus on our region and our people and who we represent and and so on, and we, we've taken some historical attachment to that. That's ultimately, everyone's got to buy into it and everyone's got to be willing to make a few sacrifices. And it, you're young men and shit, by the time you get to the uh, early 30s or whatever, you might be out of the game, or maybe coaching. So you, you win that a play short. You might as well have a crack and make the most of it. <coughs>